<clears throat> the views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. And now, boys and girls, and boy girls, and girl boys, and boy boy <laughs> girls, and girl girl boys, and various. Mm -hmm. It's time to get out your trapper keepers and your trapper set freers and your trapper willing to discuss a traders. And your trapper Johns. And your trapper Johns. Because it's homework time once again here on the Pope on Film Podcast. Yay! <clears throat> Ooh, someone reset their computer. Yeah. People of the internet, may I have your attention, please. Each and every week, unless we just don't feel like it, this podcast assigns homework in the hopes of bettering its listeners, nay, mankind. Yeah. We hope to better mankind and dude love and cactus jack everywhere. Yes. And this week, we are officially, officially, we've unofficially talked about this before, but now we are officially talking about the long-running and fan-obsessed adult series known as Supernatural. Or, or, if you watch Supernatural and you squint really hard, you Gilmore Girls Knights. Yes. That's what I like to think, that Supernatural is secretly a Gilmore Girls slash Scooby-Doo spinoff. Awesome. is how I'd like to see it. Specifically, <laughs> I'd like to talk about my new idea for a Gilmore Girls spinoff called Gilmore Girls Nights. Here's the pitch. It's a dark and sexy Gilmore Girls reboot a la Riverdale. Yes. So a dead body is found in Taylor Dosey's ice cream shop. Uh-huh. One of the Stars Hollow residents has been found uh, raped and murdered in the middle of Taylor's ice cream shop and Lane and Kirk are on the case. I would say the ice cream guy, yeah, he did it. He's kind of creepy. Well, well, all signs point to Gypsy. Yeah. The, the woman that runs the, the garage, but it could be anybody in Stars Hollow. Who can you trust? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of abs a lot of uh well you would have to suspect gypsy because she is the closest thing i think on that show that you would get to like leatherface yeah or or the outback hillbillies yeah or the outback steakhouse and you know you know when when gilmore girls gets real yeah they mistreat the shit out of her because she's just a fucking peon mechanic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cause, Absolutely. Because everybody in Gilmore Girls is really pretty well affluent. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that when, when all is said and done in the end of the first season and you find out who... Uh, raped and murdered the dead body in Taylor Dosey's ice cream shop that it's going to be um, Mr. Kim. Yes. <laughs> and that living with Mrs. Kim for so long just drove him to rape and murder someone. <laughs> <Yep>. Yeah. <laughs> but then that's going to add a bunch more questions for season two of my Sexy Gilmore Girls reboot. Yeah. To be fair, though, we are not tackling the actual live-action CW show that somehow is about to start its 48th season in the fall. Yes. No, no, no. That show is too all-consuming, and I do not have that amount of free time to spare. Instead, this week's homework is all about the red-headed stepchild of the supernatural world. I am talking about the little-known, little-watched, and little-cared-about Supernatural Japanese Anime Series! Yeah. <laughs> no, Bella, you really don't have to cheer for that. That is not... You do what? not have to cheer for the Supernatural Anime. Yeah. Now, before we get balls deep into this, I've got a list. Okay. I got a list I am damn proud of. You see... Um... 
did that crazy guy come out of that abandoned house? No, no. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> nothing. I'm just saying sentences that all Oklahomans have said. Oh. That's just a phrase you hear a lot in Oklahoma. Oh. Did that crazy homeless guy come out of the abandoned house? No, he was just walking through the neighborhood. Okay, then. We're good. We're good. Is the, is the state motto, I believe. Yeah. We have a very large crest to get all of that wording in. Now, you see, I thought it was pretty rare for a very popular Japanese animation studio to make an anime about a freaking American live-action TV show yeah. until I did my research, and I learned, oh, snap, this happens <laughs> all the time. Yeah. So that's my list. American television shows that have become Japanese anime programs. <laughs> Japan has a long history of taking beloved American shows and turning them into Japanese anime. For example, uh, there is uh, this might be one of the first ones that they ever did, a very popular anime in Japan called Sanford and Sons and Tentacle Rape. <laughs> very popular Japanese anime. I remember uh, the guy that they got to voice uh, uh, Red Fox going, Oh, this tentacle's the big one! I'm coming, Elizabeth! <laughs> so the, there's also this one, this next one, I can see happening. I can perfectly see it in my mind's eye or whatever. Yeah. Gilligan's Panty Island. Gilligan's okay. Panty Island, yeah. Yes. Four horny men and three women, three women that all wear panties. <laughs> well, I'm picturing, like, like, can't you picture, like, Gilligan and Skipper and the professor and they're hiding in the bushes watching Marianne and Ginger and they're changing their panties and suddenly... <laughs> You see Gilligan and, and, and Skipper and the professor, and they turn into little chibi characters, and sweat is coming off of them, and they're getting all excited, and they get a nosebleed, because apparently, apparently in Japan, if you're a man and you get excited, just massive nosebleeds everywhere. That's what I've learned about Japanese men. <laughs> they get nosebleeds around women. I'm not sure why, but it happens all the time. So, so three, four horny men and three girls who wear panties... That's not including the occasional episode where uh, the castaways run into headhunters who also wear panties. Yes. Headhunter panties. I can that was a good episode. This. Yeah. I can, perfect, I can perfectly see the show Gilligan's Panty Island. <laughs> I can perfectly see Gilligan's Island being turned into a horny Japanese anime. Yeah. So uh, here's another one. Another popular American show that became a Japanese anime program. You know, everybody loves Raymond. Yes. Well, in Japan, see, they're more serious than we are. So in Japan, the show is actually called Everyone Shows a Proper Amount of Respect to Raymond-san. <laughs> Slightly different. There's less uh, shenanigans and more, hello, Raymond-san. <laughs> you are a sports writer, so you have you are very high in the classifications of people. <laughs> Can I get you a drink? You know, very very serious. Yes, it's more of a serious show. This is this one, this one. Uh, my wife came up with, and it's a pretty good one. You know, Full House. Full House, uh huh. Yeah. In Japan, it's called a house full of American girls with sweaty feet. <laughs> it's more centered on feet than yes. anything else. It's more centered on underage girls and their sweaty feet. <laughs> because Japan. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, this I've, is... I've, I've posted a couple of Japanese videos recently. Yeah. yeah. That is Japan. It's a scary, yeah. scary place. Now, this is one that Maxwell and I have seen so many times. You know Different Strokes? Yes. Well, in Japan, it's called Different Strokes Space Fight Patrol Alpha. 
uh, Mr. Drummond and his kids are actually uh, they live in space where they where they protect Earth from alien invaders, and they have these robotic suits that allow them to fly in space to fight these aliens. And if they really need it, which they do at the end of every episode, the suits can join together to form a giant robot. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I I specifically remember what you talking about, alien? That was the catchphrase catchphrase of the show. Um, This one is one that Bella has seen a bunch of times. Uh, It it actually takes two popular shows. A popular show in America and a popular uh, anime and uh, manga uh-huh. and combines them together. This is called Seinfeld Ruto. Seinfeld Ruto. Yes, uh, Jerry Seinfeld plays a cocky young ninja who goes hey, on a Ruto, journey. Uh, not just a journey fighting, but also a journey where he explores himself. It's about time. Yeah, yeah. Not only does he fight people, but also really learns who he is and grows up. <laughs> and then this one of course is my favorite this one is the absolute best and tell me you can't see this okay okay it's really simple it it's uh it's called the brady bloodbath <laughs> <laughs> the whole family including alice wake up in an abandoned warehouse <laughs> and they're each given a weapon, and they're told that they have to kill each other until one is left alive. Do they remember who they are? They remember who they are. Ah. They have no idea how they got there, but as you go throughout the series, you learn that one of the Bradys isn't who they seem. In fact, one of them was in on it the whole time. Spoiler alert, it was Alice. <laughs> Alice is in league with Sam the Butcher yeah. to get the Brady fortune that they must have if they have this massive, like, weird three-story house yes. in L.A. somewhere. So, that one, that one's a good anime. You can see that, right? Can't you see what's what's the little the little blonde one with the curls? Cindy? Is Cindy. that Cindy? Uh-huh. Can't you picture her just going nuts on someone with a chainsaw? <laughs> Yes, she would have to pick up the and, chains. and and it would probably be a black man. Oh, and also, can't you picture not only because of only... Cindy Brady? Because you you remember Cindy Brady got into quite a bit of trouble, going oh, yeah. going full blown Trump supporter on the radio. <laughs> oh yes, that's right. Hmm. And not only can you imagine Cindy Brady like uh, cutting up uh, her dad's body. But can't you also imagine doing it while little Tiger the cat is like sitting on her shoulder or something? <laughs> and like she's like killing her mom while also calmly petting her cat. So we've got that sort of like a uh, like a uh, schoolgirl chick from from uh, Kill Bill vibe going. Yeah, where she's cute, but she'll also cut a bitch. Go go, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So with all that in mind, it's no surprise then that Japanese anime company Madhouse would create this 22-episode anime series officially titled Supernatural the Animation in 2010. Uh, there's a long-standing history of Japan just stealing all of our good shit. <laughs> Not that uh, Supernatural is good by any means, but still... Here they come again to jack my style. No, my wife is a huge Supernatural fan, and she would be the first person to say that Supernatural is a horrible show. <laughs> In fact, she said that on this podcast. Who, who did you just have to defend yourself from? Uh, Bella. Bella was upset that I called it a bad show. <laughs> oh, yeah, the graphic... The graphics are the worst graphics this side of Sharknado. What the plot? It's amazing. The plot 
Yeah, the plot is amazing. Two brothers go looking for their dad. And then they find the dad. And then the dad dies. And then they go looking for their mom. And then they find the mom. And then the mom dies. And then one of the brothers dies. And then comes back to life. And then the other brother dies. And then comes back to life. And then they uh, resurrect the devil, and then they fight angels, and then they have homoerotic fantasies, the end. Yeah. <laughs> just described the first 12 seasons of Supernatural. You're just <laughs> I can think of something better, something that would be... That would be ten times better than Supernatural. I'm going to get what Supernatural hints at and just turn it into a show. I'm calling it Queer Bait the Series. <laughs> and we're going to get handsome young men and have them not wear shirts and want to kiss each other for 60 minutes. We're getting it on the CW uh, right after Riverdale. And it's mm. going to be just as beloved as Supernatural is. <laughs> now, Bunny... Point of order, I just want to say this now before we get into a discussion on Supernatural or yes. the Supernatural anime. I will be mixing up Sam and, Sam and Dean's name in this discussion. Sure. And the reason for that is because I am a big freaking Gilmore Girls fan. Yes. So more, much more so than Supernatural, despite the fact that Supernatural is on like all the time here now. Well, so, let's, just, let's just call Dean Dean. Why didn't and what, what? regardless of whatever his supernatural name is. But that's where it gets confusing, because Dean from Gilmore Girls plays Sam, the brother of Dean in Supernatural. So it gets all confusing. But I, don't, I, see... I don't live and die by their fucking rules, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, so when I see Jared Paddle McCacky, or whatever his name is, what's his name? Uh, uh, there you go, Jared Paddle McGuckin. <laughs> I think Dean, the uh, the the six foot ten inch, dumb as a rock, freaking moose, whose only who's whose most successful job he has is stocking green beans at Taylor Dosey's supermarket. <laughs> like even even when he's married, and they 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 are hoping to have a child he's still stocking zima <laughs> at taylor dosi's supermarket no wonder he was dating rory he probably wanted to get his hands on the gilmore fortune yes did we figure out how uh, uh, edward herman died he may have been killed by dean <laughs> this may have all been part of his freaking plan yeah. in my mind in my mind, Supernatural is exactly a spinoff of Gilmore Girls because when uh, Rory breaks Dean's heart by going out with uh, Mr. I Hope They Serve Beer in Hell, that <laughs> dumbass, freaking, horrible, dumb, stupid Logan Huntsberger, Logan. who I will never forgive. Yeah. And the freaking... Life and Death Brigade, god damn it, I hate them so much. Uh, he's like, oh, she broke my heart. How could Rory do this? I'm going to get in a Chevy and Paula and fight monsters for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> so Supernatural is just a dark, gritty Gilmore Girls spinoff. It, it, yeah. it fits. But just an FYI, I'm going to mess up the names. So moving on. Mm hmm this anime series is set roughly somewhere between seasons one and season two of the show. As evident by the beginning scene between Sam and Dean, where Dean calls Sam Sammy. And yeah. Sam go Sam is all, don't call me Sammy, I hate that. So by season 10, uh, 5, 10, 13, etc., these two guys are BFFs and they're inseparable. And if you're a shipper, then they're possibly secret lovers too. <laughs> But in the in this anime, there's still a lot of tension between these two, and they they still don't fully like each other that much. They haven't been around each other for for a while. Uh, yeah. Also, they're still looking for their dad, and their dad is played by Jeffrey D. Morgan mm -hmm. in what I believe to be a handful of episodes before they kill him off proper. And I love the fact that Jeffrey D. Morgan plays uh the supernatural dad 
because uh, they're looking for their father, and then they find the father, and then the father is killed. So basically, uh, it's weeds all over again. Uh, weeds I'm totally unfamiliar with, so... Oh, that was a great show, and it's about pot, and it's funny, and what's his name? Uh, 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 what's his name? He used to host, uh, he used to be one of the Weekend Update guys. Um, he's in it, too. Dennis no. Miller? Seth Meyers. Not, uh, not Dennis Miller, but closer to that. Um, like, who was right after, who was right after Dennis Miller? Not Norm McDonald before that, between those two. Ah, oh. oh, his name is on the tip of my tongue. Oh, God damn it. I don't want to have to IMDB him. He's in Weeds, and he's freaking hilarious. Okay. Uh, oh, God damn it. What's his name? What's his name? What's his name? God damn it. Let me just pull it up. When I say the name, you're going to be like, Kevin Nealon! Damn Kevin it, Kevin Nealon. Nealon. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe I forgot that. Yeah, Kevin Nealon's in Weeds. He's freaking hilarious. <laughs> steals the steals the goddamn show. Anyway. Uh, yeah, uh, it, Weeds starts out as just this woman, and she's in the suburbs, and she's selling uh, pot because she is trying to afford living in her house because her husband has died and her husband is Jeffrey Dean Morgan mm. and he's only seen in maybe like two or three episodes in flashbacks because he's dead yeah so when I w Natasha and Deanna are slowly watching all of Supernatural from the beginning uh, this is like a, a couple of go arounds for Natasha but Deanna has never seen Supernatural before, so Natasha's forcing her. So every Saturday <laughs> night, every Saturday night, they have a date in my house where where every Saturday. yeah Supernatural Saturday, everybody comes into the house, and uh, there may or may not be some drinks, and we all watch old episodes of Supernatural until a new episode of Saturday Night Live comes on. But it's summer, so Saturday Night Live never comes on, so it keeps on going until like two or three a.m. Oh man, that's my every Saturday. Just watching old episodes of Supernatural. So when I saw that the dad was Jeffrey Dean Morgan, I'm like, oh my god, it's Jeffrey Dean Morgan. He's going to die soon, isn't he? He does not live. <laughs> Jeffrey Dean Morgan does not get to live a lot in the things I've seen him in. The comedian well, does he's... not have a long life. And now he's on The Walking Dead, and I can't see how he can have much long longer on the show. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how far can you stretch that fucking character out? Yeah. He's draining. So, He's so brutal. Yeah. And he also... stress-inducing. And, and let me tell you... Let me tell you what I don't like about Jeffrey Dean Morgan's character in The Walking Dead. I may have talked about this before on the podcast, but I'm going to say it again. Yeah. Where the fuck is he getting perfectly white shirts <laughs> this is the fucking apocalypse yes. it's a zombie apocalypse and it's been happening now on the show for like years and he comes in wearing a perfectly clean white shirt like there are no <laughs> fucking washing machines going here like how are you dressed like fucking prince when everybody else is dressed like a like a Dennis, there's some lovely filth down here. Yeah. You know? Everybody else just looks like shit, and you walk in like you're in a fucking Snoop Dogg video. Yeah. I call bullshit on that. And The Walking Dead has gone on for so long now. I forget what season we're in, but... Uh, yeah. By this time, the Earth has got to start getting cool again. Yeah. Where you've had a few seasons of animals, like deer and shit, you know, repopulate without any kind of checks on them, like hunters or anything like that. And you've yeah. had a few seasons, you know. You're going you're gonna to be just, like, bumping into deer soon. So, like, this whole food issue is over. Yeah. Or should be over. And what they really got to do is find the guy who's mowing the fucking lawns. Yes. 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 
<clears throat> I don't I it, don't know why they're not playing that subplot. The Walking Dead has been on for so long that my opinion, which I've had since forever, which is that The Walking Dead sucks, is now finally starting to become cool. <laughs> It's like, oh, wait a second. Now a bunch of people think The Walking Dead sucks? Oh, shit. I felt like that the whole time. Right here. Number one, I, me. It seems, I'm patient zero. It seems to me like, although I haven't been hearing much about it lately, and I don't think we're out of the season yet, but it seems like people hate it during the breaks. Whenever The Walking Dead is not on, yeah, that's when people hate it. I just I just hate any show that is a horror show about zombies. Yeah. And they have to apologize because they had a scene that was too bloody. Yeah. Like where the fuck do you get off? Mhm. Like like uh yeah, the entire cast of The Walking Dead is rolling in their graves right now. Yeah. Because oh my god, you filmed a a scene in a horror show that was too horrific. Yeah. We're really sorry, but uh, we do realize that that last episode of Sesame Street was just too educational. <laughs> yes. We apologize to mm -hmm. all of the fans of the letter J. Mm hmm. Yeah. Like you're a freaking dumbass. He didn't have a he didn't have a metal detector. He had a he had a, a weed trimmer. He was oh, mow, mowing the lawn. God, I'm so concerned. Yeah, we're still talking about the crazy guy outside. Oh. So this is set between no, season wait, one no, and season. Wait. There's yes? really there's really a crazy guy outside? No, he's just a, a crazy looking guy who apparently is mowing the lawn of the abandoned house across the street. Okay, I think here uh, is here is the here's the important question. Is he carrying an assault rifle? Uh he's black, so no. Up to, to, I wouldn't worry about it. I was going to say if he is, then yeah. he's probably a cast member of The Walking Dead. He's the guy who mows the lawns. Mm. That's a good point. That's a yeah. good point. Yeah. Yeah. That's a damn fine point. But, oh, my God, the more I hear about The Walking oh, Dead and the more I watch The Walking Dead, the more I'm able to say, God damn it, Z Nation is looking better and better. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Z Nation is The Walking Dead, but fun. Yeah. It's just... Yeah, it's, it's... I was finding it, like, borderline <laughs> fun, you know? You have to watch it for a while. When you get, like, into <gasps> season the end of season one and season two and three and stuff, it gets funner. Like watching it in the beginning, I had a hard ass time, but once you got like into season two, I'm like, okay, I'm pretty much into this. And yeah, it's starting to get fun. We, we were watching it and it was and like, it was, strippers and stuff. it was pretty good, but it, it, it was having a really hard time finding itself. Yeah. In the beginning, it it's, it's very serious and, this is our Walking Dead. And then after a while, they go, you know what? Fuck the Walking Dead. We're just doing our own thing. Yeah. Yeah. After a while, it just becomes fun as hell. And the effects are so asylum. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So the, the great thing about this being set in early Supernatural is they haven't gotten to heaven yet. And oh. I, mean that, I mean that in both a literal and figurative sense. So this is early Supernatural. There are no angels. There's no Lucifer. There's just none of that shit. It's still, we're going around and um, sort of monster of the week. Yeah. Sort of. A thing. And I like that. I like that the anime is focused on the early years of the show. Uh, you know, I also like the anime style. I was very impressed with that. But that being said, I get this thing. Yeah. I, I like to call it anime blindness. Yeah. It's essentially, I'm watching an anime, and I at first I go, oh, my God, look at how beautiful that is. That's so beautiful. Oh, my God, and hand-drawn animation, everything in America is just all freaking computers now. And look at that beautiful hand-drawn animation. I'm so impressed. I'm blown away. I'm so impressed. But then, yeah. like, 15 minutes later, I am fucking done with it. <laughs> 
it doesn't matter what fucking anime I'm watching to in the beginning, I'm blown away. But then at, at you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes later, I'm like, oh, shit, can we just, can I not? I'm so bored with this animation. Well, Jeannie, Jeannie really nailed it when she had said, because it's not really animated. They're drawings, and then there may be like a tear dripping down. That's the only thing moving. That's the yeah. Only so thing essentially, animated. yeah. So what you're saying is that this is this is like a a modern updated version of those old Marvel cartoons. Yes, I didn't from the '60s. Marvel Remember cartoons. when they'd have like the Mighty Thor, and really they just get Jack Kirby drawings and move a few things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's basically what this is. Or Speed yeah. Racer. Speed Racer was very yeah. much like Speed that. Speed Racer. Yeah. Yeah. So, Supernatural is a difficult topic because it's been on the air for something like 37 seasons now. I'm 37? Yes. So, so what I well, set no, up... Not no more. Yeah. So, what I set up for this homework session is I asked us to go into this asking ourselves one simple question. Yes. Would you watch this anime? No. We're just going to watch the first episode and then ask ourselves, would you watch this? Is this entertaining enough that you would watch this anime? Bunny, would you watch this anime? No. Yeah, I don't think I would either. No. 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 It, no. First off, I could see no. why supernatural no. fans Hate don't it. particularly <laughs> like it. Okay, yeah. because why do, you, why do you think that is? Because first off, supernatural is basically whacking material. <laughs> okay. Yeah. However, you may need to have to accomplish that. Yeah, jilling that, material. That's between you and your lord, but yeah. The characters didn't even look like the characters. And that that is, like, the key. I work with about three big Supernatural fans, but, like, almost all big Supernatural fans, they were quick to state that they weren't fans, just like Natasha is. Yeah. It's like, hey, Katie, you're a big Supernatural fan. Yeah, well, you know, I'm a fan, but I'm not, like, I'm not, like, one of those crazy fans. Well, see, it's, it's like when you're, when you're cruising porn... And you find a dark-haired Harley Quinn. It's like, oh, fuck you. Yeah, yeah. You know? So anyway, so anyway, none of the women that I worked with knew of the existence of the anime. But uh, specifically, shout out to Katie Baker. Katie Baker! Um, she helped me get to the bottom of the fandom's hatred of the supernatural anime. Ah. She said, Steve, supernatural is two hot guys getting into adventures. If the hot guys aren't there, I don't see why anyone would watch this supernatural anime. Mm, and kind that of what, what I was you saying, said, yeah. Yeah, is exactly it. It's like Bon Jovi. Right. It's like Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi's music was eh, the lyrics were ugh, yeah. and they were an okay band. But the, the main draw of Bon Jovi back in the day was this attractive, shirtless, tan guy with, mm-hmm. with no shirt on and beautiful hair, like, gyrating around. For, so, so, he, so he, o- he always had a very Tiger Beat look. Yeah. So mm-hmm. here's the thing. Um, we are constantly surrounded by an infinite number of, of uh, dimensions, alternate realities an infinite number in which an infinite number of, of uh, different things may occur at any period in time. Yeah. It, just an oh, infinite you. number, and we just can't see it because we're stuck in this dimension. We can't see the infinite us's, uh, you know, the, the infinite possibilities that are out there. So somewhere out there, there is a universe where everything is exactly the same as our universe, except... The band Bon Jovi, the band exists, and they write the, and sing and record the same music, except John Bon Jovi is not the lead singer. Steve Buscemi is. 
It's the exact same band, and they sing the exact same songs, they do the exact same videos, write the exact same albums, except instead of John Bon Jovi, it's Steve Buscemi's pale white skin, his naked, like, topless body and tight jeans. But that Just bitch picture. can sing. Have you ever yeah. heard Steve Buscemi sing? <laughs> yes, and he has a great voice, but here's the thing. The band Buscemi would not be as popular as the band Bon Jovi. Yeah. It, it, so if you got, this is what I'm thinking as far as Supernatural is concerned. If you got Supernatural, if you got the exact scripts, the exact, you did shot for shot, you did the exact same show, okay? Yeah. Except you replaced Sam and Dean with two fat dudes. <laughs> okay. Let's let's talk about alternate realities. There's an alternate reality out there in which Supernatural exists as a TV show, except Sam and Dean are played by the fat brother from My Name is Earl. Yes. And Hurley from Lost. Yeah, yeah, okay, perfect casting. It's the exact same show, shot for shot, scene for scene, line for line, except those two fat dudes... No way they would get to season thirteen. Although I will say, although I will say, I would watch every second of that goddamn show. But Natasha would be in the room going, "Eh, I don't know what you see in this show." <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go listen to Bush, the band Buscemi. <laughs> yes. That is the key to this. That is the key to this right there. Mm-hmm. Steve Buscemi and two fat dudes. <laughs> yes. Mm. I was impressed by how gory the show was. Uh, the that is not the, that is not the first time we were we were visited by Steve Buscemi and the two fat dudes. Yeah, I we we did that in another episode somewhere. I forget where though. See, we need a historian for the show. We've been on for so long. We it's do need a historian. Yeah. It's difficult for us to remember all of the shit that we do callbacks on. I'm pretty sure that there's a possibility that our discussion of the Supernatural anime is going to actually last longer than our discussion of Johnny Depp's new pirate movie. Just saying that right now. Yeah. There's a possibility the that that might last longer. The Supernatural fandom is going to come after me. The Supernatural fandom is going to come after me? I'm not saying anything bad about the Supernatural show other than the fact that it sucks. I'm impressed that I've been able to do this bit about the supernatural anime without Natasha here. It, her fault. She went to Walmart to go open carry. So that's her <laughs> fault. Uh, yeah, if she were here for this, this would be three times longer. Just want to take this time to say yes. that she would be butting in and talking about how people don't, how she doesn't have a tattoo. Yes. Because <laughs> in Natasha's mind, she's not a crazy Supernatural fan because she does not have a tattoo. That is her, that's just her thing. She doesn't have a tattoo. That's she's her not a crazy line. Fan. Yeah, that's her line. To be fair, though, I have seen a lot of people with Supernatural tattoos, very learned people, um, professors, yes. and oh historians, and okay, fine, cam girls. <laughs> I've seen a lot of cam girls. With supernatural tattoos. There. Are you happy? Yes. I have seen I have seen a lot of cam girls with that with that supernatural pentagram thing like on their shoulder or back or whatever. Oh yeah. So supernatural is very popular with chatterbait.com women. <laughs> from America. A lot of them are from like like they put their location as like fantasy land. Okay. I guess you don't want to say Bulgaria. <laughs> And who Location. would? Although, we're very big in Bulgaria. Yeah. Location, Sexville, USA. Because that's <laughs> easier to say than a small room in a, in a abandoned house in Russia. Yeah. But anyway, Cam Girls, big fans of Supernatural. I'm happy, happy to say that. Well, it's all part of the research for the episode, you know? Yeah, yeah. You All had to do part it. of the research. All part of the show. Got to do it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that is it for homework this week. Well, I wait a on. second. Wait a second. We, we should yeah. also mention that it had a shitty plot. Yes, it did. 
Yes, it did. You know, I know it's only 22 minutes, but like, and it was all so brooding when you pretty much got it. Okay, it's kind of a thing, sort of a thing. You got doppelgangers and everybody's a double. You know, there's nothing happening. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Scooby-Doo has had harder mysteries to solve. Yes, they have. Yes, they have. I cannot wait for the supernatural Scooby-Doo crossover episode that's happening (laughs) in season 13. I do not care that much about Supernatural, but that sounds so fucking stupid (laughs) that I will be watching every goddamn frame of that. Yeah. I, I, I hate Scooby Doo and I, and uh, Supernatural is okay, but oh my God, this is going to be so bad that I'm just going to be there like a big bowl of popcorn. You hate Scooby Doo. I do not like Scooby Doo. I do not like Scooby Doo. I've never liked Scooby Doo. I liked Scooby Doo in the sixties. Because when I was growing up, they still showed showed the old Scooby-Doo. The old classic Scooby-Doo and the yeah. spooky backgrounds and the 60s music and occasionally some musical artist that I've never heard of shows up to sing some song and yeah. and, and Davy Jones and, and they're eating. They're at the, the pizza parlor dancing. Mm-hmm. Like, I love classic Scooby-Doo. But then growing up, like, oh, wait, here's the new Scooby-Doo. Here's the Scooby-Doo Mysteries. This week's guest, Ben Vereen. Yeah. And then there's, like, a Scooby-Doo and Vincent Price, and they're fighting demons. And that turned me into a Satanist. Thankfully, I found Jesus. Yes. Uh, then there's, like, a Scooby-Doo and Scrappy-Doo, who I never fucking liked. And, like, they, they Nobody kept... liked that little bastard. Yeah, they kept going to the Scooby-Doo well so much that I'm like, okay. So there's been like 12 Scooby-Doo's, and I liked one of them and hated all the others. That means I hate Scooby-Doo. Yeah. So I only liked I, one I, I would, I would agree. I liked the I would original agree. Scooby-Doo, and I liked that movie they did with Batman. Other than that, it all fucking sucked. <laughs> <laughs> So I've always hated Scooby-Doo, but there is a sort of like so bad it's good thing with Scooby-Doo, which is why I was so excited to hear that uh, speaking of so bad it's good that Scooby-Doo was teaming up with WWE to do an animated movie. Yeah. Scooby-Doo's WrestleMania Mystery starring John Cena. And I'm like, okay, this is going to be horrible. I'm going to buy this. <laughs> And I did, and I owned it, and uh, we've seen it, Maxwell and I have seen it maybe like 50 times. Yeah. It's so bad. It is so absolutely horrible. Scooby-Doo wins the WWE title at the end of it. (laughs) And it's so unbelievable. Let me tell you why it's unbelievable. There's a mystery and a murder and and, a and they use a video game to control people's minds, and there's this ancient beast and uh, a mystery and all of that's believable let me tell you what's not believable at the end during wrestlemania they show various people throughout america watching the pay-per-view at home and one of the the groups of people that they show watching the pay-per-view is three business women <laughs> that's the most unbelievable part of scooby-doo's wrestlemania mystery three Single business women are not purchasing the WrestleMania pay-per-view. Like, I can believe in the talking dog in the van solving mysteries. Yeah. But three smart business women watching WrestleMania? I call bullshit on that. <laughs> yes. That's the unbelievable part. Now you've gone too far. Mm-hmm. My suspension of disbelief can only go on so long. That, that is true. So now they're doing a supernatural episode, and and that's going to be so horrible. I can't wait. (laughs) I would say that they're going to jump the shark, but they've done that so many times. Yes. Supernatural has been on for so long that basically supernatural is when you get the car and it has a cassette player. 
Mm-hmm. And you go, oh, I'd love to change that, but it just came with the came with the car. And I guess I'll just leave it in. That's supernatural. Yeah. See, the CW is going. Wait, Supernatural still on the air? Yeah, it just came with the network, and <laughs> we would replace it, but that'd be a whole thing. And yeah, we're just gonna leave it on the schedule. Yes. Yeah, be that's on supernatural. The safe side. Yeah, yeah, that's supernatural. I can't wait. I can't wait for the Scooby Doo episode. That's gonna be wonderful. And one day we will have to do the Scooby Doo WrestleMania movie. Just FYI, one day I... we will. I that that we've done so much worse. <laughs> yeah, we have. We have. It's bad, but in like a in No, it's just bad. I was yeah. gonna say in a good way, but no, it's just horrible. It's just horrible. I love it so much. <laughs> Anywho, that is it for homework this week. I could go on and on and on, but I'm not going to. Supernatural is such a deep ass show that any amount of time spent on Supernatural wouldn't be enough for Supernatural. It's T V quicksand. Yes. Basically. And we sincerely hope that your eyes, minds, and rectums have all been suitably opened. Aha! But don't think you're getting away that easily. Don't forget next week's homework assignment. And for next week, I could not be more excited. I could not be more excited for next week's homework. I am going to watch it with Natasha. I'm going to watch it with all of the family. We are all sitting down as a family for next week's homework. Because next week, we are having a very special homework assignment by watching the 1987 ABC After School Special, The Day My Kid Went Punk. All right. Starring Love Boat's Bernie Koppel and not quite humans, Jay Underwood, who was also the boy who could fly. <laughs> so this is just going to be a real 80s love fest. I found a perfect copy of it. It's on the YouTubes. I'll send you a link, Bunny. Awesome. ABC after school special. What happens when your son goes 1980s punk rocker? This just brought something to mind. Going back a while, and I th- think I might have shared it with you, or I might have thrown it in the group or something like that. I was listening to another podcast, and they started talking about something really weird. Uh, and it was a, a, a mid-70s like teen sex comedy that was... Very loosely based on the Archies. Um, was it a made-for-TV movie? Uh, no. Okay. Because I remember... I don't, I don't know what kind of release it possibly could have had. Okay, because I remember a made-for-TV movie of the Archies, but they're all in, like, their 30s and... Yeah, no. This is yeah. this is this is a straight up sex comedy and mm. that is what really made it so bad that that they were saying it's it's like really rapey as hell. Really? You know? <clears throat> so, I don't know. I remember uh I remember what I saw there it is. It, it was called Return to Riverdale. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Archie's Return to Riverdale. It was from 1990 on NBC. It was an NBC made-for-TV movie. There's a really embarrassing uh, scene in which Jughead raps Sugar Sugar. Oh, my God. With his son. It's really uncomfortable. Oh, no. Yeah. Because it's like... It's 1990, so everyone had to rap then. I I might have seen that on a YouTube video, because sometimes I watch video about comics, uh, and I, I was watching some Archie ones. I think they might have been cutting that in, and I didn't know what it was. Huh, yeah. Was he like a real Eminem style? No. 
No, it was pretty embarrassing. He did it with his son because his son wanted to impress a girl at school. They showed a clip of a guy, and it looked really rough. It just, you know, it looked like somebody just shot, like somebody just did this in a park somewhere. But it was a guy yeah, with that... his kid, and they were rapping Sugar Sugar. Yeah, then that was definitely it. Yeah, that was definitely it, because they yeah. do do it in a park, if I remember the scene correctly. I, 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 it was burned into my brain, but it was primarily burned into my brain because, uh, what's the name of the, what's the name of the blonde? Betty or Veronica? Yeah, Betty. Betty. Betty was played by Lauren Holly. Yeah. And I loved Lauren Holly back in the day. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, and she, like, she tries to, to, like, uh, seduce Archie, so she gets undressed in nothing but a bra and panties, and it was, it was a, a, a very important scene to me growing up. <laughs> I was very proud. I, w I could imagine. Yeah. So anyway, next week, the day my kid went punk. ABC Sorry. after school special. I think that has to. Yeah. I think that should be the full official title of it. Yes. The 1987 ABC after school special, The Day My Kid Went Punk, starring yeah. Jay Underwood, who back in the day was in everything. <laughs> uh, I'm, yeah. sure I'll, I'm sure I'll know him the second I see him. You absolutely. You absolutely will. <laughs> you absolutely will. Because he was in everything. He was in those not quite human movies, uh, where he was like a like a a kid robot that was created, and he would get into adventures with his dad and stuff. He, they they seemed to play nonstop on the Disney Channel in the eighties. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm I'm sending you the link to it right now. Just FYI. Hi, Amber. Uh there you go. I just sent it to you. So that's next week. So cool. can't wait Thank for you, that. Sir. So be sure to join us next week for another homework assignment with the Pope on Film podcast. Yes. Cut and print. <laughs>